So let's see. He watches Grey's Anatomy, How Scrubs, The Good Doctor, and ER, and he says, "You know, I'm something of a doctor myself." So this is actually a famous scene. Hello all, this is Dr. Dheeraj Masapu and welcome to my channel and uh, this is my friend Dr. Roshan, he's a pain specialist and Dr. Roshan, can you tell a little bit about yourself to us? Hello uh, YouTube world, uh, so my name is Roshan, uh, first of all thanks uh, Dheeraj for inviting me to your channel, I'm a big fan, I've been following you <laughs> for a little time, you're wonderful inspirations to <laughs> get more videos on my own uh, channel. But yeah, my name is Roshan, like I said, I finished uh, my MD anesthesia, but I was always interested in uh, chronic pain management. So when I got the chance to go to UK, that's what I did. Uh, I spent nearly three and a half years, I did my master's in chronic pain. And now that I've come back, you know, I, my, my dream is to create really good awareness among the masses and, uh, you know, have a better lifestyle and help them manage all their chronic pain issues. Super. So this video is not about the pain management or uh, so this is about how doctors react to memes. Are you ready Roshan? I am ready. Are you ready? So, they are always ready. So now I, you have to do like this. Yeah? Yeah. Do, not like that. I, 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 I. Start with the first meme. Phew. All right, so this guy looks like he's had a really, really long day. <laughs> Three in the afternoon, time for a cup of coffee. And this is how, you know, a secret, we need coffee. We need good coffee breaks. This is the only fuel which we keeps me alive. Is that, is that a black coffee? It's a black coffee. Uh, benefits of black coffee? See, black coffee has less calories, only two calories per cup, so better go for a black coffee. Okay, let's go to the meme. So looks like, first of all, he looks like he needs a cup of coffee, but yeah, let's see what he said. I have a good handwriting, but patients don't believe I'm a real doctor. <laughs> See, your handwriting is very bad. <laughs> this is for you mainly. That's why I kept this as a first one. Yeah, yeah. So my handwriting is legendary. Um, it really looks like a third son kid has written all the prescriptions. So the pharmacist really does not believe that actual doctor wrote this because my cursive handwriting is really bad. But on a more serious note, actually, this is a very serious uh, issue in the medical field uh, because handwriting, if, if the pharmacist reads it wrong, you can get the wrong medication. So it, as per law now, by the Indian medical and by the Western medical standards, the prescription has to be in legible capital writing, no mnemonics and you know the side effects, everything has to be told in detail. Even the NIBH accreditation uh, to give all the, uh, one of the rules is that all the drug prescriptions should be given in capital letters to the nurses. On only then they are supposed to administer the drug to the patient to decrease the drug errors. Okay, let's go to the next meme. Alright, you want to be the doctor? Yeah. You can say the doctor. The doctor, you are going to feel a little bit of pressure. Ready? Me? Yes. Your sister is younger but already has a career path and owns her home. <laughs> So, I think this means that, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, doctors actually take a lot of time to finish their uh, uh, degrees and specialties. Actually, I finished my uh, total uh, uh, education by around 30 to 33 years of age and uh, that is when I finished my neuroanesthesia training and started my actual job at 33. So, by the time my sisters and cousins and everyone, they actually got their jobs, they went to USA, they did MS and uh, they, they, they bought their houses, they bought their big cars and everything, they are totally settled. Ah, yeah, so the one thing guys, so, you know, you're youngster, no one tells you this, it is a long career path, right? You have uh, five and a half years of MBBS, you have the internship and then you have the NEET exam. If you get in the first shot, you have three year PG, sometimes you have the bond, that's another four, five years. You study for um, the masters, which is another three years, you want to do super specialty, could be three or four years. So exactly like you said, you know, my MBBS, MD and my masters in pain, you know, came up nearly 12 years. So as I was studying, my friends and other family members would just finish their things and they were set, well settled in life by the time I earned my first paycheck. And uh, But funnily enough, this does not hold good because my sister is also in the medical dental field. So, you know, both of us were broke pretty much throughout but, and now we are like... But at the end of it, is it worth or not? Becoming a pain specialist, yes, that's what? Absolutely, it's definitely <laughs> worth it. This is a choice, this is a calling. That's a take home Do message. not ever fall like, uh, you, know, my, uh, you know, someone forcing you to do it. So the youngsters out there, please, only if it's a true calling, because it's a long drawn road, 
but you know if it's something which you want to do you know you never call this work and it's, it's a passion so absolutely no regrets but yeah be prepared for the long haul yeah let's go to the next meme Pew! this is a little serious one not a comedy meme so why i kept this is uh, because of the covid and ways a lot of uh, medical professionals and everyone have sacrificed their lives so oh, i thought one meme for them so absolutely your reaction you're giving up my years of my life to add years to to yours yeah absolutely uh, especially you know the last two years pandemic across the world you know a lot of frontline doctors you know as per the indian medical association um, we lost nearly 2000 doctors and headline uh, workers in this pandemic which is huge um there's nearly 2% of all the doctors which are infected you know, ended up losing their lives um but this is say across the world and you know, a lot of people are adding a lot of sacrifices the time the effort etc so we you know in some stressful situations there's so many doctors who become so stressed out they actually losing their life and so that their patients can live a lot longer you know it's it's, it's a very hard life but it's very fruitful so yeah hopefully you know but things change in this a, pandemic it's especially you it's know, a duty hopeful. and responsibility and we love doing that yeah and absolutely. we always love our patients and uh, you have to watch my previous video on karma is a boomerang which is a good, very good story written by me please watch that link is in the description and one more thing i forgot to tell you please subscribe to dr roshan's channel link is in the description next meme. let's go to the next meme Pyong. Oh. Read your day, please. <laughs> right so how bad are the results doc Doc says, looks like we'll never run again. And I say, so basically the same as before. So this guy has never been running all his life. So no yes. difference in his lifestyle with this injury. So he's ecstatic that he's never gonna run again because nothing's changed. But you know, for both of us, we are really into uh, sort of fitness. <laughs> Uh, you know, I've been always uh, going to the gym or some sort of physical activity since I was actually 17 and I found that like a huge stress reliever for me, especially for both of us in a way, such stressful situations as both anesthetists, we manage such uh, high uh, pressure situations. We need a physical outlet to release our stresses and tensions and there's nothing like a good exercise or going for a jog or a run or yoga, what gets you going? You know, be active, be physical, spend that 45 minutes to an hour. It's like investing in yourself, you know, there's nothing like it. So for me, it is more like a neuro anesthesia, neuro intensive care. It's like a long day and I have to be motivated most of my day and be active. So to be like that, I have to exercise in the morning. And I've clearly seen difference the days when I don't exercise. Those days are very dull and apathic and, you know, I'll be like a zombie, I'll be roaming here. And so what I did every day morning, 15 minutes, I will be exercising and that keeps me motivated and the drive will be there yes absolutely let's go to the next meme <laughs> all right what do so let's see he watches Grey's Anatomy how scrubs the good doctor in ER and he says you know I'm something of a doctor myself so this is actually a famous scene from the uh, the first Spider-Man Spider yeah. the Tobey Maguire yeah. one where he becomes a green goblin yeah correct uh, but yeah, I think this is a meme based on uh, what uh, we experience. I, 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 will, I, will, I will talk about this. Is actually, what is happening nowadays is all the seasons are, uh, people are looking at these seasons and thinking that actually they are showing the real medical content. See, they are showing a part of medical content, but the most important for them is drama and story. That is what they are strong in. The medical content they are showing is only to support the drama. That's it. So, but people are watching these uh, seasons and they are thinking that they have some kind of medical knowledge. For example, House MD uh, says that he wants to do now biopsy, he wants to do EEG, he wants to do MRI, he wants to do on the same patient. See, no one doctor can decide to do all these things actually. They are specialists for each zone. Correct. Right? So, Correct. I don't think... Uh, I mean, they are literally, like you said, you know, they are taking the samples, looking under the microscope, they are breaking into the patient's home, collecting samples, etc. They are breaking all sorts of laws, you know, but medical is a huge, vast field. Uh, literally, you take 8 to 10 years to specialize in a one particular field, in one particular part of the body, etc. So, you know, it's not a joke to be a radiologist, to be a pathologist, to be a surgeon, to be an MD, etc. All in one show, which is, it's not possible. But I guess for entertainment purposes, 
it's definitely so doable take home message is watching these seasons don't think that you got some medical knowledge and to get real medical knowledge you need to see the videos which are uh, the proper youtube videos which are told by doctors or you have to read the content proper content not the wikipedia and among all the shows i love scrubs so you know if you Why really want to experience so more authentic uh, it is very authentic uh, scrubs especially as an intern when i watch scrubs it shows an actual life of an intern it has a lot of comedy but it has a lot of heart in it you know with okay. not no special extra drama or spice like uh, okay. grey's anatomy who's always like love me choose yeah. me and some bomb will be there in the stomach and the patient will be taken <laughs> some bombing and everybody's dating each other and yeah. everyone's looking good nobody is looking good you know there's no time for me etc <laughs> it's a hard life but you know scrubs if you guys want to watch any particular medical show i really recommend scrubs let's go to the next meme pyo all right so I'll we have problems yeah. in your personal life choosing medical career no life <laughs> no personal life no problems this is absolutely true i agree to that what do you say <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah. i mean like i told in the previous meme you know, it is a long drawn out uh, thing but if it's a calling you know you're ready to sort of uh, give up yeah. it's all about uh, finding that work life balance you know as your training is very hard you know you know i used to miss a lot of my yeah. friends gatherings weddings trips etc but once you become into the professional field once you start working it's up to you what kind of life you want to have you know you can you can you can choose to have a good uh, work life balance so it's up to you what kind of doctor you want to be and you you can have both so basically it's a spectrum of doctors so some uh, some professions for example my a uh, profession of neuro anesthesia neuro intensive care will demand more work hours and i have to put in a lot of hours because the criticality is like that so you can choose some other profession in anesthesia or some other uh, branches uh, like radiology where a fixed time can be there so Absolutely. it depends on the type and the doctors actually the junior doctor should know before taking up a branch so based on their psychology and state they have to choose a branch uh, for example me i want to be in a high risk zone i want to, i don't mind working for longer so i chose this one so you have to choose based on your character and personality what do you absolutely say? absolutely you know not one size fits all or you know so sort of as kids we've been brainwashed it's only surgeons or orthopedists that want to be but there's so many medical fields options out there for like for us we both became anesthetists and right now anesthesia is one of the highest paying jobs especially in the united states there's a huge job demand across india you go to uk where i was and there's always a vacancy in every hospital that have been there for any steps you know because we do multiple roles we work in icus i'm a pain management specialist your obstetric anesthesia you have uh, onco anesthesia pediatric anesthesia so there's is and a lot of management positions are taken taken up by anesthetists because we work in a very big team and we are very focused on safety and quality and that's what any big hospital sort of loves one more important thing i'll tell you any developed country what is the top most paid specialty you know it's anesthesia so as the country develops the anesthesia pay scales and everything will improve so india is still in the developing phase so maybe 5 to 7 years later anesthesia will be one of the top branches according to me absolutely so you know you it's exciting i mean we just promoting yeah. anesthesia but i guess not many people know what anesthesia you know, from a yeah. grandmom or other old people was just uh, you know putting people to sleep it's not as simple as that so all these days we are behind the screen yeah so now yeah. actually with pain specialty like he will be in front of the screen all the time yeah so i need a intense rest i will be in front of the screen all the time like the many people are coming out of the behind screen concept and a lot of uh, absolutely and there are a lot of exciting very senior professionals who sort of inspire both of us and we strive to be like them and for youngsters also they you know you know if anesthesia is definitely a exciting field and you know if you have an opportunity please jump in well let's go to the next meme pyong <laughs> welcome to the medical field where any day is a work day and holidays don't matter you are to talk about this <laughs> for me uh, this is actually quite uh, very p- personal to me because i love the show i grew up watching whose line is it anyway and that's drew carey the host of the show i didn't know before putting the meme actually i, I never seen the show yeah it's absolutely hilarious because um, the comedians there they think on on the go there's no scripted thing it's all they give you a topic and they react to it so it's okay. really brilliant and the actual line which drew carey says is instead of holidays don't matter he says the, and the points don't matter okay. but for us we are the comedians here in his show and for us yes any day is work day and holidays don't matter 
fields like high risk like neurosurgery or a cardiac surgeon or a cardiologist you know it's all emergency cases right so when they come in uh you have to come in there's no like wait till the next day yeah. so you the certain fields so you choose you know you do analyze what you're interested in what you're passionate about many times i went to movie and uh, in the middle of movie i get a call and i come back because for me the patient is important and the yeah. movie i can watch the next day also what is or we can watch in the ott platform nowadays but uh, if True. something happens to the happens to the patient we cannot get him back so any time in middle of the night also i'll be ready to come back so that is my state of mind and uh, let's let's go to the next meme pyong and this is the last one all right so we have a very nervous surgeon we have seen that a couple of times nervous surgeons especially during a training days first year anesthetist first year surgeon you know all for a bit nervous so looks like he's saying relax david this is just a small surgery don't panic and the patient is saying my name is not david and he says i know i am david yeah so i, I think we all sort of empathize what he's feeling you know especially in the medical profession yeah. when you're doing something for the first time we always nervous No, I, I want to comment on this. Actually, yeah. me personally, if I am doing any procedure on a patient like tracheostomy or any procedure, I will be thinking in my mind what all can go wrong. So I'll keep all the plans ready, plan A, plan B, plan C. We'll be kept ready. If this goes wrong, I'll inform them. I'll keep them as a backup, ready, so that uh, I because see, I want to do the procedure with almost zero error. If I had to do in that level, then um, some kind of fear is always there in medical professionals. I think before doing any procedure, so that is a common thing. And if you don't have that, then your plan A, plan B, plan C will never be there. You'll be very overconfident while doing the procedure. So I think I I'll go I, I'll go, I'll vote for this guy and think that is right. <laughs> vote for yeah. I guess uh, what we're trying to say is you know uh, as anesthetists, you know, there's always a bit of OCD among all of us. So before we start any case, you know, just before a flight takes off there's a safety checklist they check the tire pressure the fuel the engines the pilots do a ton of checklists before the flight takes off and that's how we view our anesthesia our machine as a cockpit we have multiple checklists of the machines the gases the drugs the patient history allergies to medication the weight you know the child elderly patient you know there's a lot of medical comorbidities and we come up with an anesthesia plan prior to starting any case So you know there's a lot of planning which goes and so when the patient comes in you know we're very comfortable with what we do and it's a it's a team yeah. thing sometimes you know we discuss this plan with the surgeons also so they know what is happening and uh, yeah it's always good to be a bit of uh, ocd and always good to be a bit nervous you know how we describe anesthesia is this like hours of boredom everything is fine with seconds of panic because that's what happens yeah. you know hours and hours surgery is fine and suddenly something happens where it's just chaos you know blood pressure falls something happens and you have to be switched on that time. yeah that is the time you have to keep your cool and you should not get tensed and get panicked even if things are going out of control you should at least be in control absolutely so you're the particular captain of yeah. that particular ship because if you are in tension then the people around you and people below you will also going to panic True. that is what which you really don't want at that point of time yeah so we are like bit like him you know we always <laughs> relax relax yeah, it's like a small surgery Outside don't we panic show it. <laughs> you can't show panic you just have to like yeah. be calm just trust your training yeah. and trust your instincts yes so that's it for today and uh, so if you like the video please uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, share the video to multiple people and that will help us in growing the channel and also i told you subscribe to dr roshan's channel link is there in the subscription and follow us thank you very much bye bye and you have to do uh, i'll do it yeah please ready see you